Alright guys, I'm going to continue my series on uh, repertoire for Y against the Sicilian. In this video I'm going to show you the um, a variation against the Sveshnikov, which is what I'd play. And it starts with evil, c5, knight f3, knight c6, d4, takes, knight takes, and now knight f6. This is, goes into the Sveshnikov after e5. Uh, next move. Uh, the Klashnikov is e5 straight away. Now knight b5, threatening to come into d6, they play d6 themselves. We play something like c4, this is one line. And um, they tend to play knight f6 first, force this knight out, and then a6 to put knight back on the, a bad square. So this is the Klashnikov. Um, it's pretty similar to the Sveshnikov, but it, it does sort of mean you, have, well, you, get, you can get c4 moving, which is quite nice. Okay, so Sveshnikov. It's a little, well, slightly more popular. So after knight 6 they're attacking c3, we play knight c3, e5, knight db5, so you can see the resemblance already. Frames come to d6, so they play d6, and now we go bishop g5. So the difference is now they play a6, now after knight a3, b5, and they have the, now they have this idea of playing b4, winning a piece. Now there's two moves white can play, they can either play bishop takes f6, or knight d5, the idea of taking f6. Um, the difference of playing knight d5 first, so now they can play bishop b7, and when you take an f6, bishop takes back, and eventually something like c4, uh, knight comes back, a5, um, oops, so they, b3 is played, and then black eventually gets around to playing this bishop g5 move, and the bishop ends up on, b, um, ends up on a quite good diagonal, it's, and you can always trade off a knight when the knight comes, it's, it's rerouted back into the game. I don't really like playing against this, I find it annoying. I I like to take first on f6, and now after g takes f6, knight d5, we have to play, have to play knight d5 because black still threatening b4, it's knight d5, and now black has these vulnerable um, uh, pawns, which it, which I'll show you the weakness of these pawns in, the, in this bishop g7 line. Um, for now, first I'm going to show you f5. So F5 aims to just break in the center immediately. And now, a really good move, I think, here for white is to take on B5 of the knight. Now, you can also take with the bishop. This is not anywhere near as good, I don't think. After takes, knight takes. You aim to try to come in uh, on C7 of check. But, yeah, there's nowhere near as good. He's facing like rook B8 and after check, it's just king, king D7. It just looks like his knight's misplaced. So... Um, after f5, knight takes b5, pawn takes b5, bishop takes b5. And now the best move for black, surprisingly, is bishop b7, and followed by rook c8. It is, and the reason bishop b7 is a good better move is isn't really into any of these knight f6 check uh, cheapos, which I'll show you later on, and. I've had a lot of games in this line, and people never play bishop b7 against me, because after you take on b5, they're pretty much playing, after you take here, they're playing them, themselves now, they, they're pretty much out of theory. Not a hard, I know hardly anyone who plays this Sveshnikov, actually, I don't know anyone who knows uh, how to play against this line, because, you know, it just seems like a crazy idea, it's actually really, really effective, I've won every single game I've played with this line. So, bishop takes b5, and now... A lot of people just play uh, bishop to d7, and regardless of what they play, bishop b7, bishop d7, we take on f5, and because black can never really capture because it, because it's defend, well, they still got to defend the knight. Um, also mention here, they try queen a5 check in this position. This is really bad. This is losing for black b4, and now black cannot uh, protect the knight in any way. The knight can't take the pawn because it's the pin on the king. And if queen takes b5, then knight c7 check. And we're just winning the queen here. So, black is black is lost. So, bishop d7. Bishop uh, d7, and now e takes f5. So we've got, we've got three pawns for for the piece, and we've got three very nice pawns here. If we get these guys going, you know, we've got two connected pass pawns here. Uh, we get them all the way down to to the seventh. They're gonna they're gonna cause massive problems. 
So, if bishop g7 tends to be the main move, but if they try queen a5 check here, which is fairly logical, um, because obviously now the knight's protected, so they some lot of players play queen a5 check because b4 not working. b4 they can just take, and after say bishop takes, uh, or actually say they go knight of 6 check, and king and bishop takes, and then knight double check, king has to move and take on a1, everything's just falling apart for white. They do these pieces are both weak, and uh, white's white's losing here. So, so b4 doesn't work, and therefore c3 is the best move. Because after c3, uh, again black can't take on b5 because the knight c7 check. So now white's just thrown into placing like b4, and then get a4 going as well. And uh, maybe even knight f6 check and just taking off this bishop, leaving the king in the middle. And this, and then I'll also leave this knight really weak because of the pin. So, okay, so let's play. So let's say black tries something like rook take rook to c8, stopping any knight c c7 check. So now they're threatened to take on take the bishop. Um, an interesting idea here. I was just looking at quickly. Looks like knight knight f6 check. Only problem I can see with this move is say after king e7 and we take on d7. If they take here, then we've got we get a really nice position after queen d5 because we're threatening bishop takes check and then queen winning the queen and we're also threatening to take this pawn. So in fact, I'd say why it's almost won here. In fact, he probably, he probably is just winning. Uh, but the problem is they can play queen takes b5 first, and now this knight's stuck. And this pawn's weak, and we can't castle, and just messes things up. So it's, unfortunately, it's not working. So instead, you can just go a4 and just be patient. Uh, let's play a a4, and now, and now knight f6 is a threat, and a big one, big big threat. And also, we're going to play something like b4, kick this queen away. We can just castle uh, to get our king to safety, and a lot of great squares. Our queen could enter the game. Say so, uh, not that one. Queen h5. And there's a lot of pressure against this pawn, and it's very hard to see how Black's going to get his bishop into the game. He might try something like bishop g7, ready to castle himself, stopping knight of 6 check. But now queen g4. This is a key move in, in these variations. Queen g4 is often played a lot. And now the bishop's under attack, and if Black castles, uh, there's all sorts of things going on here, um, like just taking on c6. Bishop takes c6, we have f6, which just wins. So checkmate on g7. And if rook takes f6, uh, c6, we can't play f6 because the pin to our queen. So, but instead we can just play check. Well, actually, we could play knight 7 check and take the rook, but I think even better would be. Yeah, as long as your knight doesn't get stuck, if you can get away with this. Knight f6 check, it's pin on the bishop, so the king has to go in the corner. And then I would play knight takes d7. This is what I was analysing briefly after rook d8, just making sure the knight doesn't get trapped. Uh, it looks trapped here, but you can actually play f6, attacking the bishop, and then the queen protects the knight. And after bishop h6, uh, I'm just hoping the knight's going to be able to escape. Uh, We could even play queen, queen to uh, queen h5. It looks like a really good move. Bishop's attacked, and now see the bishop drops back, which we can take on f7. But okay, so say if, if rook takes d7, that's actually losing. There's going to be mate on g7, and we we are, we are just three pawns up in this position, even if it wasn't mate. So after queen h5, black's losing. He has to play something like bishop f4 to try to win this knight again. And we could take on f7, which is a decent move, threatening checkmate. Or we could even play something like g3 here, and now the bishop's, uh, the bishop's got a lot of shortened squares. Or the black might try to go crazy here and take, take, and queen takes check. And he might be able to get perpetual. So maybe what I'd do first is just take on, take on f7, protect our knight, threaten checkmate. So I guess the bishop goes back here, and um, now I 
probably just Castle. I think he's going with Castle. Yeah, breaks Castle here and he'll have to say Rook. Rook C7 trying to win the knight, we can come back, attack into Bishop, Bishop moves, and we can play G3. And just after they take, we can take, and we're going to end up three pawns up because they can't recapture back that pawn because it's always going to be this attack on the queen. But anyway, I went to far much, far much uh, depth in that. That's one. A little crazy. Sorry about that. But yeah, I was just trying to show you the uh, all the tactical ideas in this variation where you can take and then play knight e7 check or knight f6 check or you can take and, and after the bishop takes your f6 and it's really, really dangerous for blacks. So I think the best way for black to play is to never even put his queen on a5 to, to just to play something like bishop g7 here. Um, because now the queen, the queen does a good job in in stopping uh, e7 checks and f7 checks and f6 advances so this is probably the best way to play but now even still after queen g4 we attack the bishop and now if they castle we can take on c6 and once again um, black is losing because like the bishop takes f6 is the decisive move for threatening checkmate on g7 only way to stop it is knight. It's queen takes, knight takes check, king hit j and we can just play something like queen to but queen h4, queen h4, or we can just go knight h5. Uh, both are both are really good moves, and well, we're gonna watch just the queen up here, so we need to discuss this. But yeah, this really show this is a really good variation against uh, against this f5 move. I think you'll probably get find you get bishop g5 played against you. Slightly more, but that's okay. We can play. I've got a good line here. Normally, c3 is preferred, but I really like the c4 idea. Just smashing open a, um, a black's position, and b4 will always get played. Taking's no, not really any good because now knight takes, and already this knight's back in the game and threatening stuff like knight into b6. This pawn's going to be really weak. I should need to put this knight into b6, and then this knight can come in and take on d6. Check. So they'll. And obviously now the pawns, the pawns being attacked by a load of pieces here, the bishop as well, and the knight. So they'll play b4, which helps us. So after b4, we can just in the Sveshnikov, it's very important to get this knight um, and reroute it back to c2 into e3, where it's going to be really powerful, controlling uh, both d5 square and the f5 square, and obviously sitting in the centre there. A knight on e3 and g3, they're always pretty good positions um, for, for a knight. Um, okay, so after c4, b4, knight c2, they're helping us. Getting over to e3, because we've gained a tempo, getting this way. And now we're attacking the pawn. a5 has played. And now we can already go to e3 now if we want to. But the move I play here is, is bishop d3, stopping... You want to stop f5. If black can get f5 in, he's doing pretty well. If he can play f5 and then castle, um, he's always going to be doing pretty well. So I'm going to open this bishop up and this bishop's going to come into the game. So I'd get bishop d3 in. And sometimes I've played in games, I've just gone g4. Just like, so if they castle here, g4 really isn't such a bad move. Because if you can close in any f5 advances, they're going to have this uh, permanent pawn structure. And this bishop's not really doing much. You can go to h6, but even still, it's not really aiming at much as long as you don't. Because well, I've sent that bishop h6, you can play queen to f3. This pawn's always going to be weak. And if they start doing king g7, we can start playing h4. And this bishop has got to be careful after, say, rook g1, g5. It's not going to, it's not going to get trapped. So, yeah. I mean, if you don't like g4, it does look. Um, just sort of mess up your pawn structure a little bit. You can play something like queen h5. Queen, h queen h5 is also a good move. And then knight e3. Uh, the only problem with queen h5 is a lot of players will just be annoying and they just play this anyway. This f5, and after you take, they get e4. And actually, black, white can get in a lot of trouble after this and takes and some like rook e8 and pin. So you have to play something like f3, and then it might come take down here or b2. And it's just. Yeah, it's just it's not nice. I don't like this. So I, this is why I play G4. So 
I can never let never let the bishop into the game to play g4 here and stop any f5 ideas. If they try h5, that's completely ridiculous, and it's not it's opening up their king. And so they'll tend to play something like a rook b8 always gets played in these lines. Let's so let's start of that move. Trying to play any b3, you can just play b3 now, stopping that, keeping a really nice pawn structure. Um, and knight e7 is also a very common Sveshnikov uh, idea. And you can play knight into e3, because when they take, you want to recapture back via knight. And obviously, bishop at h6 is no good because they're losing f6 pawn. Uh, so, say they play bishop e6, just trying to kick off this knight, and then queen f3. And now, taking the knight's going to be really bad because we can take back the e pawn. Bishop's attacked, bishop moves back, and now um, we can just play something like queen e4. And we've got really, really, really nice diagonal. And uh, the only way to stop mate is going to be something like f5, which is we can still just take. And it's going to get a really nice position. So if, was, if Black was going to take at all, we'd have to take the bishop. And even still, as the bishop takes, we can play. And we can play pawn. Uh, e takes. I wouldn't want. I don't. I would offer my uh, my knight off. Because this position actually works off to e4 with the queen takes, it's going to be rook, rook e8 in the pin against the king. So, and our knights are really well placed on e3, so after bishop takes, we want to play e takes d5 instead. And now we can play the same idea queen queen to e4. This pawn's very weak, these pawns are very weak. And, you know, if all, if all else fails, say if black managed to defend this, well, you can play some like knight g6, we can go h4, h5, kick the knight, play our queen. Play our queen to e4. Although actually, I'd play after knight g6. I would. You always got to be careful with e4 ideas. If you play h4 here, black will very often just sack if queen uh, with e4. Because now, if queen takes or bishop takes, there's always going to be stuff like f5 and uh, the rook's always hanging. Or they're going to play rook e8. It's going to be dangerous against the king, dangerous against the king. So after knight g6, I just play queen e4 straight. Away. It gets queen e4 move in. Stop them. Um, Playing e4 themselves, and now we can. We've got all the time in the world to play h4, h5 to castle, put a king on b1 or something, bring this rock all the way over. Do you know, I probably won't castle because they can always. Black could uh, cause some problems with with a5 and open up this a file. So I just stick the king on. You stick the king on d1, uh, on d2 if you want. That's pretty safe. E2, you're going to get a check from the knight. But you shouldn't even need to move your king actually. After h4, h5, you're going to threaten mate. Black's going to have to start playing something like rook e8. And after h4, threatening h5, um, Black's, Black had to play rook e8 so he can drop the knight back and protect us h7 pawn. So now, so now as they say, they, they play a4, we play h5, knight back to f8. And now, um, yeah, I won't, I won't play h6 because then the knight's going to be able to come back eventually after, well, after bishop um, h8 first. But here we can just play king king to e2, and say if they take and take and put the rook on a file, we can just bring our king up to bring our king up to f3 if you wanted to. There's no point here; you know, it's not being attacked. Uh, just uh, bring the knight in, and if they black takes, he's not really achieving much. He can't; he still hasn't got control of the b file uh, of the a file. And this pawn now the knight sits on a fantastic outpost, it's threatening this pawn and. Now, if we have the rook on here, we can bring our rook up uh, to the seventh, which is always dangerous. And all black's pieces are just stuck. This bishop can't get in. This bishop can't get in the game. The knight's stuck protecting the h7 pawn. This rook's pretty stuck. Um, the queen's pretty stuck defending the b6 pawn. The only way the queen can only go to like say b6, but then this rook still can't get in the game because it needs to come to the a file. We control that. So. Um, yeah, black's in a real mess, and you can even offer some the trade of queens here uh, because all these pieces are falling. Although I'll probably just keep the queens on for th for the time being because uh, it just it limits so so much of so much of um, of black's pieces. So this is what I'd play against Bishop G7, and Rory so showed you what you should play against F5, that the gambit where you where you get three pawns back for the piece, which is always uh, it's just always good. And that's it. That's it on Alder Sveshnikov. And please subscribe and like and uh, watch my videos on 
the rest of the Sicilian annoying defences. So I'll see you next time. Thanks.